It's important for leadership in an organization to not just incorporate AI into their organization, but ensures that their employees are trained on it and that they want to use the tool and express interest in using the tool. Don't forget about training your people. Don't forget about building those AI skills if you're going to introduce AI to your organization. Welcome to Beyond the Bite. My name is Mo Hafiz, and today we're talking about a topic that I've often explored with a lot of leaders, leveraging AI in your organization. Are you thinking about introducing AI into your organization, into your company? I highly suggest you don't dive in without a plan. I would say you begin with the end in mind. And today we're covering the step-by-step -step strategy that I think every leader needs to effectively and ethically be able to incorporate AI into their workflows with. And this starts from proof of concept to training your team. So here's how to make AI work for you. There is an increased interest in AI adoption within organizations. I go to conferences and network events all the time, and I find that leaders are, all know what AI is. They know about how important it is. They know that it is a game changer for businesses, but they're not really sure how to actually use it within their organizations. This hopefully will serve as a quick guide for leaders on how to actually begin to incorporate AI into an organization. And starting with step one, it is very, very important to have a strategy when you use AI or when you use any really any technology. I've been in the tech space for over 10 years consulting for large Fortune 500 companies. And when it comes to not just AI adoption, but really tech adoption in general, you want to be intentional with it. You want to make sure that it aligns with your organizational goals. Don't introduce any kind of technology, especially AI, without having a kind of a clear end in mind, because this actually can create a lot of problems. It can break workflows. It can cause teams to be disorganized. Some are using the tools, some are not. So this is part of the reason why beginning with the end in mind, having a strategy is really, is really step one of incorporating AI. Have a plan. This is one of the reasons why having a plan, especially for AI, is important. Because guess what? Your employees are probably already using it. People in, in organizations, ChatGPT, a lot of these open source tools that are free to use, folks are using them already. So don't let your organization start using unsanctioned AI and essentially give away some of your uniqueness out to publicly, for example. So this is one of the things that is important uh, for AI adoption in organizations and why organizations who have been considering adopting AI really should start as soon as possible but starting by having a strategy. The most difficult thing when it comes to AI implementation is tech that has been implemented without any kind of clear strategy. It can break workflows, it can cause some problems, it could even get you sued. So this is one of the reasons why you, you wanna do that and you wanna make sure that if you do incorporate any kind of new tech, especially AI, that it doesn't get built into the a workflow and ends up getting wasted or worse, doesn't meet expectations and uh, leaves you with a bitter taste in your mouth. Step two, after building an AI strategy, step two is start small. Don't try to incorporate AI completely into every part of your workflow and, you know, whether it's, you know, reading emails and sorting emails and from emails, it's pulling documents and doing all this stuff. You have to remember that AI actually needs to be trained. It's not always going to do the right thing which is why you need to start small. Begin with a POC, or what we call a proof of concept. Proof of concept is a way to assess whatever the tool is, the AI tool's effectiveness, for uh, the specific fit that you're trying to do in your workflow. Helping a client, for example, incorporate AI into their finance workflow requires you to make sure that you begin with some small project, begin with some small workflow that you could say, okay, we're gonna use whatever the tool may be, whether it's a RAG system or Copilot, Microsoft Copilot, or, or any other such AI tool, Start with a small POC, make sure that it is in a high impact area, something where you're actually going to see results right away. Automate a simple process that you find your folks having to do over and over and over again. That's what AI is good for. It's great for very repetitive tasks that, that uh, people have to do in an organization, but really doesn't require a lot of thinking and work. It's just sort of very rote. Those are uh, one of some of the first, what we call the low hanging fruit of incorporating AI. It's very manageable. It, it, uh, it delivers consistent results and it really does help uh, your workflow in a way that can give you immediate results and immediate feedback. And then from there, you can go and build on top of it. You know, go from that POC to another POC. Besides building POCs for these projects um, and starting small, it's very important that if you're going to incorporate AI into your organization, that you have buy-in from your people, right? You have buy-in from your employees. At the end of the day, AI is a tool that assists humans. 
It assists humans in an organization. Yes, you're going to be automating some workflows that are ultimately going to help your team. But if your team, if you don't have buy-in from your team and you don't give them proper training, then at that point, you are going to, again, be breaking potentially good working workflows and introducing the tool in a way that instead of being a nice precision instrument is going to become a blunt force that, uh, again, could potentially create problems for you. It's important for leadership in an organization to not just incorporate AI into their organization, but ensures that their employees are trained on it and that they want to use the tool and express interest in using the tool. When we talk about investing in AI as a tool, don't forget that you want to have humans in the loop when it comes to AI. This is very important, not just from an ethical perspective, but also to make sure that uh, you know, we, we know for a fact that a lot of these AI tools make a lot of mistakes. They are prone to hallucinations potentially sometimes. And if fed bad information, they will give bad results, which is why we want to make sure that there's always a human in the loop when it comes to incorporating your AI. So if you're going to invest in incorporating AI, make sure that part of that investment includes training building skills within your organization. Make sure your, your organization is AI smart, that they know the tool they're using. They know that it, it, it's, uh, its benefits, but also its potential dangers and how to ensure that, that these dangers don't manifest in a way that can create a problem for the organization. And at the same time, by investing in training for your people, you are going to be creating a culture of innovation. You're giving your employees, you're giving your organization the tools to be able to create and to innovate and to do really amazing things with AI, but in a way that is controlled and guided and curated and with a strategy in mind. So don't forget about training your people. Don't forget about building those AI skills if you're going to introduce AI to your organization. And then lastly, perhaps more importantly, and this comes of course with building an AI strategy, is ensuring the ethics of the AI uh, empowered workflows that you have. What do I mean by that? Well, when it comes to automated systems, they are feed off of data. I mean, the data is the lifeblood of AI. So you're going to be feeding it data. This is one of the reasons why you want to make sure that if you're going to incorporate AI into your organization, that you do so with privacy in mind. Don't have uh, your folks using AI tools, unsanctioned AI tools, where it can potentially be a source of data privacy leaks, which could be, you know, could be a nightmare for your organization, especially if you've got sensitive uh, documents that you're working with for clients. You absolutely want to make sure that that data privacy remains paramount and remains something that is a part of your AI strategy. So making sure that the tool that you're using is an internal tool to the organization, that when you train it and when you use it for your workflows, that you're ensuring that you're doing so ethically. And ensure also at the same time that you are, if you are training on this data, that you don't use this data for any nefarious purposes, whether intentionally or unintentionally. And this is, again, why you want to have a good AI strategy. Uh, but also make sure that if you are implementing AI in any kind of a workflow, there needs to be transparency. Everybody in the organization needs to know that this is where the AI tool is used, this is how it's being used, and that we have eyes on. You, if you automate a system such that you don't actually have transparency into its inner workings, you can really have some issues. And I'll give you an example. Let's say you start automating AI into your HR or hiring workflows. You want to make sure that you have, you know, that you ensure fairness and transparency in terms of how the AI is being used in these workflows. If it's sifting through resumes, for example, you don't want it to make decisions of any kind that could compromise fairness. This is what we call decision-making or human-in-the-loop decision-making, where you, you don't let the AI tool make any kind of decisions. You have the humans make the decisions and the uh, AI tools empower the human, giving them all of the analytics and things that they need. So I always recommend that when you do build AI into your organization, into your workflows, that you have some ethical guidelines about how you plan to use uh, the AI in your workflows, how you plan to use the data, how you are going to ensure that there's transparency when it comes to using AI and, and using the tool at hand so that you can avoid the misuse. And also make sure that in your organization, you foster a culture of innovation and learning, but also of responsibility, of responsible tech usage. Make sure that your people know how to use AI, know its dangers, and know how to use it ethically uh, so that you can have good results. In conclusion, when introducing AI, leaders need to make sure that they have a strategy. Begin with the end in mind. Make sure that you start small with a POC project. Get buy-in from your people. Make sure that they're trained. Ensure an innovation of culture and training of, and introducing AI in a way that embraces its power and its ability to help your organization, but also at the same time, making sure to be wary 
of its drawbacks and making sure that you do so ethically. I think leaders really need to look at AI tools nowadays as a fantastic tool that can empower the organization to do more, but just be thoughtful with its integration and make sure that you're using it ethically. So uh, if you like this episode and want to find out more about how to use AI and use it to empower you and your workflows in your organization, I encourage you to like and subscribe beyond the bite. Thank you for joining me.